Welcome to our tutorial about setting up a click track. In this segment, we're going to learn how to configure Cubase's metronome to help your recording be more precise. It's a pretty versatile and flexible tool with many options. The click track gives you a simple way to lay down some rhythmically accurate tracks. You can choose to have the click track active during playback, during recording, or both. You activate the click track by pressing click on the transport panel, and this toggles the click track on and off. If you don't see the transport panel, ensure that it's active. F2 is your shortcut. If you don't see the click tool set on the transport panel, just right click anywhere on the transport panel and ensure that master and sync is checked. Toggling this button on will give you two bars of clicking before you start recording. The pre-click button is also lit up or white when it's on, just like the click button. Again, you toggle on both the click track and the pre-count clicks with these buttons here in the master and sync section of the transport panel. Underneath, we can set the metronome speed, that's the beats per minute. In order to do that, you'll have to disable the tempo track. Make sure the tempo button is not lit. If it's lit, the word track will display next to it and you won't be able to edit the beats per minute from the transport panel. You'll need to use the tempo track. Cubase will want you to use the tempo track instead. And the tempo track is actually your best option if, for example, your song changes speed. To learn how to use the tempo track, please see the next lesson in this course. In order to adjust your beats per minute here, the tempo button should not be lit. You should see the word fixed. And now you're able to modify both the time signature, let's say 3 over 4. Let's restore to 4 over 4 though, because my drum groove is actually a 4 4 beat. And here is where we enter the metronome speed. Simply left click in the field, that activates it for editing, and then type in your new value. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust the value. Let's restore to 120. We are able to make some changes to the way the click track works. We do this from the metronome setup dialog window. Let's go to transport on the main menu strip and scroll down to metronome setup. Here's the metronome setup dialog window. You can also get to it with a control click on the click button. That's a command click on your Macintosh. The metronome options area lets you pick when you want to hear the click. If you want to hear clicking during recording and playback, leave both boxes checked. To hear while you're recording only, uncheck metronome in play. To hear during playback only, uncheck metronome in record. Remember, the click button will still need to be enabled to hear any clicking. If you want the clicks on a different value than your time signature setting, like on every eighth note instead of every quarter note, check Use Count Bass. Then use the arrows on the right side of the field to adjust the beat subdivisions, and use the arrows on the left side of the field to adjust the number of clicks per bar. Let's leave it at a quarter. So again, the arrows on the right adjust the beat subdivision, the arrows on the left adjust the number of clicks per bar. Below are the pre-count options. Pre-count refers to when the metronome clicks before you start recording or playback. You can choose how many bars of pre-count you want to hear. The three radio buttons below give you some options for the time signature of the pre-count clicks. Check the first button if you want the clicks to be in the same time signature as the recording starting point. Check the second option if you want the clicks to be in the same time signature as the project's tempo track. This is useful when, let's say, you're punching in at a place where the tempo changes and you want the pre-count clicks to be in the new tempo rather than the old tempo. If you prefer a custom time signature, check the third button and adjust the beats and subdivisions with the left and right arrows. Of course, never be afraid to press the Help button, which gives you at-a-glance definitions of many of the features on all of the setup windows inside Cubase. And let's close the Help window.
Let's take a look at some of the options on the right-hand side of the window. Cubase lets you use a MIDI device, your audio hardware, or both to generate the metronome click. If you check here, the click is going to play through a MIDI device or plugin. And if you check down here, the click will play through an audio output. To hear the MIDI generated click, choose a port and a channel. Just don't assign the click to any channel that you've got other MIDI data assigned to, otherwise your MIDI recording is going to contain those clicks. The click can have different high and low notes. The high note plays on the first beat of the bar with the low notes on the rest of the beat. C3 is how you refer to middle C, C4 is the C above middle C, etc. Both of these are set to middle C. Use these sliders to adjust the velocities of each note. That's MIDI speak for the volume. Here the high is just a bit louder than the low. Under Audio Click, choose Beeps to hear Cubase's default clicks. You can adjust the pitch and the volume of the sounds right here. If you choose the Sounds option, you'll be able to load your own custom metronome samples by clicking in each of the fields to launch a Browse dialog window. Just select your file and click Open. Let's close the Choose Metronome Sound dialog window. Let's restore the Beeps option and click OK to accept your settings. Okay, let's toggle the click track on and also toggle on the pre-clicks. 120 beats per minute is our click track speed. If you're using the default Cubase beeps but don't hear the metronome, even though you've enabled the click function here, check your VST Connections window. Go to Devices and scroll down and select VST Connections. The shortcut key for that is F4. And let's go to the Outputs tab. You need to make sure that click is routed to a valid audio output. You toggle it on by clicking in this column here. If you see the word click, then it's on. If there's no word click, then it's off. And if click isn't toggled on here, Cubase doesn't have a place to route the signal. Let's close the VST Connections window. And one final note here, make sure you're not recording the click signal too. This could happen if you're recording audio from your keyboard that is also the source for your MIDI metronome sound, so watch out for that. This concludes our lesson about using the click track.